Vantage meaning Didi Crows, Fantasme, and it really shaped this deck to beat the mirror match. As a reminder, once more, his friend did it at the Dragon Duel uh, Championship. So I, I really gotta say that if someone has the edge here, it is Wang, but it is gonna be very close, and uh, there isn't uh, <laughs> a safe bet, I'd say. That's one thing that I found really fascinating about Kosaka's list is that he doesn't have Phantasmi on there. Just Unfortunately, Zen is mostly relying on those uh, go second cards that we were mentioning. Both mind control going first and not what you want to see. So this part of this R will be the deciding factor for this game. He really needs to pick up some of the engine cards. And luckily for him, Chai did not open a single Antrop, so. Let's see where Kazaka's going. It's off these top two cards. Take a breath, take a look. And there is a sign in mining there. So that's definitely what he wanted to see. Now the next step is slowly check those 10 banished cards for a Gazelle. It's so and it's the first card, wow! Oh, it's so oh. dangerous running Cloud of Desires when you only have one copy of your key card. They are both playing the Sars throughout the previous future matches. He's never really let them down. Now it did, and this is gonna hurt a lot. Gazelle, just as a reminder, is at one for this event, so he's completely cut off, off from that, which is... Now that's brutal. Brutal. That's, that's Absolutely. brutal to be starting off the finals just like that. Stuff. I guess you have to start leaning in on uh, maybe on Jack Jaguar. Yeah, it's uh, just uh, keep keep getting monsters on the field. It's not an easy one though. It seems like he's passed. Yeah, I was about to say he's. Uh, one good thing though is that you know he only needs one monster because he can use his opponents. Yeah, you know, exactly. Double mind control there. And the really cool interaction in the mirror match is uh, Ita. So if your opponent, or you can prevent your opponent from getting back the gazelle with the wolf, then you can steal the wrong gazelle and use it as your own. So that's still an option for Koki. And I think he's going to really uh, rely on that because his end is not looking anywhere good at the moment if uh, uh, Chai doesn't overextend here. So Would you say with these two pieces of interaction that uh, Koki is pretty safe from being OTK'd here? Um, should be, but it really depends on what Chai has. And at the moment, um, I think he's, his end also relies a lot on the part of Desire. Yeah. So they, they overall have very similar ends. Um, but it is quite different. So at least he will be able to fin through his deck. And something that we have seen previously from Chai was playing around the Phantasme from their opponents when they didn't really have much going on. So. Let's see. Again, one desires who is going to have the better desires. It really might just come down to this for this game one. Another cool thing with Will of the Salamander right there, summoning from hand. Let's see, this draws a super important. Do we see the double to Gazelle taken out of the game? Unfortunately, we are not able to see those cards. But just tilt those cards slightly further forward. Yeah. Never mind. Would ah. have been interesting to see them, but the draws are pretty solid, so Foxy and Spinny both being useful in this part. Besides, a little mystery is good for the soul. Yu Gi Oh! is kind of built on it, really, with trap cards, face downs, that sort of thing. Ever since day one. Okay, and he just uh, attacks with both. Again, it's quite possible that he will just uh, hand here, maybe on a Beast Dweller, which is uh, an even better way to play around the Phantasme. Let's see what he thinks is uh, the optimal choice here. It's just a tough set of cards. He does stuff. just pass. So, uh, as he did the... Oh, and a third mind control is picked up. Wow. Well, those are definitely getting played this turn. Yeah, now he's, uh, he has a chance, of course. Might be nice to take those two monsters and uh, keep them stuck under an Xyz monster of your own. It's definitely interesting. He has quite a few options. Uh, the Twin Twister isn't that great in this matchup, but luckily for him, since Chai was playing around Bay Links, there isn't any protection at the moment. And the sign of money comes down. Right now, the only interaction from Chai is the Diddy Crow. Again, very relevant that he decided to main deck triple. Uh, I think he is the only one in the entire field that decided to go for for this, and uh, it is paying out uh, greatly, so. He's got his hand on the Jack Jaguar there. Is that or Foxy? 
running, running some numbers in his head. Yeah, because at the moment uh, he's uh, quite short of uh, another level three, since uh, Chai uh, Chia didn't really commit to it. So even the Ita wouldn't get him there. So maybe he could go for a Foxy and try to get a Spinny or something else to get going. So. He's got to have a high concentration of Salamangre cards left in his deck at this point because he hasn't seen any so far. Mind control number one is activated, taking Gia's Jack Jaguar. So from here, it also depends if he, he might have banished the Sanctuary as well, honestly. That, that would hurt even more, so... Man, hitting two one ofs with one desires. Not that's, good odds on that. That's <laughs> a risky run when you're running very slim one ofs uh, with pot of desires in your deck. Takes control of both of the Salamandrate monsters. Mind Control, a great car in last year's finals as well. It was. And uh, I think uh, we can safely assume that both of these guys might have watched it, and in particular, uh, Chio was watching, who was playing it, uh, might have picked up on Bowden uh, idea to run Mind Controls. So Interesting. So someone's Foxy, no effect. And just Practice. that sucks with it, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Main phase two. It is possible that he just wants to use it to clear the will. Mm. In that case, it is uh, much better to use it that way. Because he knows his opponent also doesn't have too much going on at the moment. So it is... And luckily, the Sanctuary wasn't banished. It would have been really too rough if he lost two of his best cards. So that is... Yeah, Foxy come down. But the DD Crow here is gonna hurt, so... Ooh. Gets tagged. If it was any other entry up here, you can see the difference. Since Foxy activates uh, in the graveyard, but the effect to destroy a spell and trap doesn't activate in a new chain, you cannot negate it with like effect veiler or impermanence. Right. And usually you see those entry ups. Here, for example, if uh, Chia had that, he couldn't negate uh, the Foxy, but the Diddy Crow paying off. He is going to get to keep those Salaman rates out of Chia's graveyard, though as he XC summons Boguska, the yes. terribly tired taker. Billy's favorite number, <laughs> as he mentioned on stream previously. Number 41, so... Let's take a rest, take a timeout. Boguska has kind of the debilitating effect while it's in defense mode. Switching things to defense and negating their effects. Link monsters, of course, can't be in defense position as they have no defense points. Okay. And so they're safe. So now a Cosmic Cyclone is picked up, and you can see one of the differences between uh, um, his deck and the other ones. He is maining the Fusion of Fire, which is quite an impactful tool in the mirror match. And at the moment, though, since you don't usually see uh, uh, the number 41 on the field, it's not going to be as good as usual, because it would prevent the Violet Chimera and it would put it in defense position. So yeah, That's a card that's been cut from a lot of extra decks, at least in North America. So always a little surprised by it. Definitely. I think it depends heavily on the fact if you're running multiple targets, for example, for super polymerization that takes away a slot because of starving venom usually, so you're less inclined to play it because Abyss Dweller is usually considered the better one. But he's playing both, so he thought the card was relevant enough in the mirror match and in other matchups as well. Just taking some time in the tank to think about think this play through. Sets a monster face down. Okay. That's something you really see in Salaman Great, and it's generally a sign that things have not gone to plan. Absolutely. The thing is, uh, number 41 is actually very annoying to deal with because uh, right now you can see his only very good play would have been a Stalio, but Stalio, of course, would have been negated, so. And finally, uh, an engine card is picked up by Koki. It gets the circle. Just as a reminder, if anyone just tuned in, there is no gazelle for Koki. It was banished by the stars, so he has to try and play and navigate this game differently. So Now, the downside to Baguska is that you can't always you know, press your advantage in this case. So she has kind of has a weaker setup here with just a face-down monster. And you know, maybe it really is a weaker position, or maybe he's just trying to get and that Baguska switch to attack position yeah. so that its effect stops. 
I think there, yeah, uh, our material also has to be detached, which means that uh, he will get back one of his Solomon Grave Master. But on the standby phase. Yeah. Which I think it is what the out. judges are catching up on right now. So he gives back the Jaguar to his opponent, but he's able to use even the third mind control right now. This is wild, yeah. So he knows what that face down monster is. It's like it is a Falco. It's, uh, it should be Spinny, maybe? I think it, it, it was the Spinny side, yeah. So the spin is there. It's flipped, uh, not in defense position, of course, but we are skipping uh, the number 41, it putting it yes. into defense. So it will be interesting to see how he, he goes for this. So he might want to push some damage, and the Ita is a possibility, uh, which I think we could see soon. Because you can also switch the number 41 to attack position, of course, to push some damage. So that's what he's going for. Because now if you get back the Jaguar from the graveyard and you normal summon your own copy of Jaguar, then yep. uh, this is a lot of damage and it would be enough to actually win the game. So I think Koki is in a really good spot to take this first duel. So he is still in the line, so... Double Jack Jaguar with Hita and Baguska. Nice this game. is more than enough. It's uh, 36 plus 50, 54, 50 74, plus yeah, it's 100 a lot. pretty much. So it's it enough. should be enough. Uh, let's see if, uh, yeah, they yeah, do realize it. So Koki wins game one. Nice, nice applause from the crowd. And uh, does it yeah. write the gazelle as well? And without yeah. really getting a whole lot of cell of this is cards. Really, if you have any doubts about side cards that are going to be useless going first, so let's see if uh, he decides to go for that. Line. Much more balanced hand on Kosaka's side this time around. He does have the gazelle, so no more <laughs> risks of getting that away. Now it's safe to play the desires. Absolutely. And uh, he really is good at drawing his mind controls. He has two more copies this game, so five mind controls just in basically 10 or 15 minutes is you gotta feel sick if you're a Ching, so. This time, though, if you're going second, it might be uh, might be a little better than last time. Absolutely. So, uh, very good hand on both sides. I gotta admit. So it seems like uh, he is starting. So thinking very carefully about what's his normal sum gonna be. Yeah, he has a few options. The thing is, when you have Foxy like this, you always wonder, should I use the effect? And I think in this case, it might be the correct decision, just because uh, to have uh, less downside with the Desires, mm. he is actually making multiple copies of all of the Salaman Great Traps cars, which makes the Foxy uh, significantly more consistent. Let's see. There, there it is. Foxy. There's Foxy. Asking, are you going to activate that? Yeah. He doesn't activate it. It is not surprising because he allows you. Uh, the only concern I had is that if you have the will, you do not need this. But if you do not have another extender, then you don't want to use the effect just because you're going to use the one in graveyard uh, once you get to the sanctuary. So. Link summons for Salaman Great Bailings. Link materials for that are just one level four lower cyber monster. So a vast majority of the Salaman Greats work with it. Or other cyber monsters like Lady Debug. Yeah, a very, very good card. A perfect opener. So now, as we were saying, he's probably just gonna activate uh, either the Sanctuary on the Wheel, uh, uh, enabling uh, the Foxy to discard either Falco or Spinny and just start playing it out. Unfortunately, there is an impermanence uh, in uh, Kogi's end, which will most likely be used on this Talio when it tries to get the Gazelle out of the deck, so. Will of Salaman Great is activated. Gives you that extra summon once per turn, or you can cash it in for a bunch of summons all at once if you have a reincarnated Link Monster. Discard Spinny to pull back Foxy from yep. the graveyard. And Spinny comes back up. And quick Exy summon. And just as expected, the Stalio comes down, and I would be very surprised if the Impermanence wasn't used here. So definitely thinking about it and 
thinking about what to do as chain link two here. Rosh Thalia lets you summon a Salamander right from your deck in defense position. Also has an ability when it's sent to the graveyard as material. Yes. For a so, just as expected, the impermanence come down. It means that uh, Ching will not really be able to extend this place that much this turn. So he's cut off from Gazelle, and that means uh, it is almost impossible for him to get to an Abyss Dweller or to other to the Roar, for example. Luckily, he does have the Rage, which is more, as we were saying, uh, due to the fact that he is playing a lot of traps, uh, even Solemn Strike, which is something that we have not seen in a lot of these decks. I kind of like the heavier uh, traps with like the Solemns, more Rage, yeah. that sort of thing. A lot of times I feel like Salome Rate really is more of a controlling deck than, than an aggressive deck. It but, is. You know, what it really is is something that switches almost seamlessly between the two. It's part of why it's so, it, its longevity is so great. Yeah, you can definitely switch, and uh, if you build a deck uh, like uh, is where you have a lot of traps, but you do put the one copy of Fusion of Fire, mm. you're basically building a very good control deck, but a deck that really punishes you, because every time you don't have the correct interaction, then it can easily OTK you. So it is a, a very good deck, and no surprise that it was essentially the most represented decks for all of uh, the past months ever since it was released. So, In North America, at least, it was about 25% of the field at all the major events. Yeah. Next closest deck was only around 12. <laughs> And here we go for the reincarnation Sunlight Wolf. Mandatory here because, of course, he needs it for uh, the rage in his hand. And he's going to use the second effect of the will, which is the rarest one, I'd say. You usually, first turn at least, use the other one. But it, it can tribute itself to check the link rating of a Salomon Great you control. And you can special summon in defense position, monsters up to the raid. But here it makes sense, because as you're seeing, he didn't have another Salomon Great spell and trap in the graveyard. So by doing this, he puts more monsters on the, on the field, and he gets the will back. So pretty good opening here, even through the impermanence. It basically cost you nothing in that case. Got rid of the will, got the will back. Absolutely. So. A Foxy is picked up. Um, it's a good start, honestly. He, his end is looking quite good, and the only card he Checks to take a look in there. There is a Bailinx that can be banished to protect Salamangrate monsters, or cards rather, from being destroyed. That Salamangrate Rage down there does present a bit of a problem. How will Kosaka navigate this turn? There are a few options. Uh, one of the main differences is that, unfortunately, he's not siding or remaining the Fusion of Fire. Because I'm pretty sure if he was, there was actually a very good chance he could have pushed uh, enough for game, even, uh, with the, this combination of cards. Here, as expected, he's just testing the water. He doesn't know about the Rage, so he's using it to, to see if uh, maybe it could have been a Roar, and then you're going to force it there. Um, the Rage, uh, luckily for Ching, has a second effect, so it is not completely useless at the moment, but he will be forced to tribute a uh, Salomon Grave from Andor Field to destroy just one card, though. So Kazaka summons Foxy, does not activate its effect. And we'll see if Chia goes ahead and uses the Rage here to stop a Link Summon. Nope. Let's it go through, and Bay Lynx hits the field. Yeah, it would have been too risky, and unfortunately, not having uh, Anthrops uh, at his disposal um, means that he's just going to pray that his opponent end isn't that great, but it is much better than the previous uh, game one, so if the previous game uh, was enough to win, then this could just be even better. So let's see what Ching is going to try and stay alive. He's hovering that rage. There it okay. is. There it is. He does go for it. Keeps his monsters on field. Sends one from his hand. And he destroys his own um, uh, Salmon Wolf. The reason being, uh, once the Bay Link hits the field, he knows that as soon as that would have been used for Link Summon, right. the rage was completely useless. So 
he was kind of forced to use it there. And um, now or never kind of situation, right? Absolutely. So now um, Koki is still in a perfect spot because he has Design and Mining, uh, which is just the cherry on top, I would say, of this uh, end. Yeah, he knows that the only card in his opponent's hand is the yes. sank, not the, the will. sanctuary, the will. Yes, because now he used the. He decided to use the one from the end, which is also interesting because I do get it. He gets the extra value of setting back uh, the rage, as we we're seeing. But yeah. at the same time, you're giving your opponent free information, and if they now know that there are no, no more interaction, you're just free to do whatever you want. So maybe I would have liked. Uh, him to use a Spinny or a Foxy for it and just play mind games with uh, And you Koki. can see the mental math right there. Absolutely. He's trying to figure out what's the biggest number I can hang on him. It could be a pretty good number, and even if it wasn't, uh, he can go for the Abyss Dweller after clearing the field, and uh, we do know how good Salomon Grid is uh, just uh, recycling their resources, but if they're cut off from the graveyard, not so much, because they're not famous for having a lot of cards in their end. They get hosed pretty hard by that Abyss Dweller. So, absolutely. Let's see how Kazaka decides to push his hand onto the table this turn. Abyss Dweller is a real MVP this entire season. Gets multiple decks, even. Orcist, oh, yeah. for example, had a real bad time. Yes. Abyss Dweller has been good since it's been printed. Like, it's just pretty much always been in the back of people's minds. Yes. It was defining during Meramil format and uh, still probably one of the best. Uh, XYZ's at the moment, so... Alright, Fox comes back from the graveyard and uses its ability to take out Sanctuary. And that's a one of. So you're not getting another one of those unless you use an ability to bring it back. Which is uh, never what you want to do, nope. really, with such a card. Yeah. So just as expected, now he can go for the Stalio. Uh, he should be getting a level 4 out of it. So since... Uh, yeah, Got nothing too surprising here. Now, will Spinny make a reappearance? I'm gonna consider his plays uh, quite a lot. I don't think he has enough at this point to just attack for game. It doesn't seem likely since there is a bait links as well to protect it. Yes. Uh, but it does uh, have a lot of resources, so he has the ability to go for it Leo and just get rid of the card. He can do a lot, so. Okay, he's thinking about this Falco. He could have also just bounced back the Gazelle for next turn, so a lot of different options, and I'm sure he will uh, find out the perfect outcome. Uh, thankfully, as just as a reminder, there is no time limit for this final. Of course, you still have to play at a reasonable pace, but at least you're not as stressed by... Uh, and having the procedure and having to calculate how you're going to navigate yes. those last few turns. So, the Ita comes down, okay, so he decides to pull the trigger, and... Checks the graveyard, sees Sunlight Wolves. And he's asking about the face-down card there. Probably, you know, how was that card set? Was it set by an effect, etc.? Yeah, he still has... Um, potentially the ability to go, I don't know, for Eat Leo... It, it, the order is slightly concerning, but it shouldn't uh, make a word of a difference. Like, if he goes for Italy and Dweller, uh, potentially getting even the Roar set, uh, face down, then it's, it's a lot. So, take Sunlight Wolf. It seems like he is considering entering the battle phase, but. Even Jack Jack yeah. going on there. He still has a lot. He still has both Falco and Jack Jaguar available in the graveyard, so... It doesn't seem like this... Uh... Okay, he does enter the battle phase. That's and just gonna to try and force out the bail exam. Spinning. And I don't know that he necessarily needs to use the bailings here. He's still got plenty of life yeah. points. It is fair enough. Uh, he does know that the roar is there, so... Uh, it, it still plays around a few cards like Ghost Ogre and Rage, so I wouldn't hate if he just kept, uh, and that's what he's doing, yeah, makes sense. He gets 1850 and 2000 in there. But now, I mean, a very convincing uh, 
line of play from Koki. He still has the Memphis shoe to keep pushing and clearing uh, everything uh, Ching has, and he knows uh, he has the full information at the moment of what's in his hand and face down, which gotta be a great feeling, honestly. Yeah, what sort of top decks are you gonna be looking for if you're Chia right now? Uh, probably the one super polymerization, really. Yeah. I, I think it is among the best ones, but it is not even, might not just be enough, regardless, because as you can see, he's getting back to Gazelle for next turn, and he's most likely gonna go for uh, an Abyss Dweller later on, so. Uh, that means that even if you do clear a significant portion of the board, then you have to deal with a lot, so. Like some, another Sunlight Wolf there. Yeah. And gets back Roar of his own. Very cool play here since he took his opponent's Sunlight Wolf there with Ida. He saves uh, the reincarnation aspect and just makes a Sunlight Wolf. That way he's considered still a summon with another one, so. Nice line of play, and we will see an Abyss Dweller soon. We got Jack Jaguar up next. And, and he gets back the Ita. Yeah. The Ita. Okay. Like, when you are able to get back Aita, you feel good. Like, it means that you're so ahead that uh, <laughs> it gotta be very nice. And as expected, uh, it Leo and Abyss Dweller. You just want to be sure you get back the rage into the deck. And here, uh, the really good uh, thing about this play is that super polymerization is not even an option anymore. He played around it by just uh, uh, linking yeah. away and then X Y and summoning an X Y Z. So getting that Salamander uh, great monster sure. off the field. Yes. So tough spot, honestly. Koki playing uh, very well and at his best. Can Ching still draw into something? It seems like very difficult here for him. Sounds it's... great, Raccoon, huh? Okay, Raccoon is the one you don't see often. It allows you to protect your Salaman Grace from battle, but it is not what you want to see it right now. Is he going to negate the will here? It's really coming down to the wire. I should really hold to your seat because this is the last place you're going to see for this year World Championship. Takes one more look through there. Pass turn, and this is just a formality. You can see him shaking his head. Koki is just a few attacks away from becoming the 2019 world champion for the TCG. Come on, Koki. No effect. No effect. Just getting he lines it up. He one goes hit, for a two attacks. Hit. Three hit, four and hit, shake. and world champion has been declared. Kosaka yeah. is the new world champion. Japan takes two world champions this year. They won the links, they won here again. Wow. Back, New back with a vengeance after last year not having a finalist for, the, for Japan and now they're taking two tournaments down. That's crazy. You can never underestimate Japan and they just proved it once more why they have the most uh, world championship wins uh, of all time and uh, one more, one more champion for them. Amazing. From Japan. Well done. Congratulations. How are you feeling?